Righteousness, loyalty, honor, respect, honesty, courage, consistency. These are the seven rules of the samurai. However, in this movie, they have replaced those rules with cooking, running, shooting, fucking, fighting, ponytail maintenance, and soft, soft kisses. We saw a samurai cop, so you know what that means. I'm Tall John Shear, and welcome to How Did This Get Made. Today, we are talking about the 1991 action, drama, classic Samurai Cop. A movie lost for many years and then discovered recently in a vault. We'll get into that in a little bit. I won't list the actors because it won't make a difference. But they are all fucking great. (laughs) What is this movie about? Well, it's simple. It's about a cop from San Diego via Japan, which I have questions about, who comes to get a gang who has one briefcase of cocaine. And then seemingly... In about two days, a body count of epic proportions just goes higher and higher every moment as they try to get to the bottom of this case, which they knew who was behind it from the beginning. This movie is action. This movie is sex. This movie is fun. And it also is a lot of lethal weapon, too. To break down tonight's film, please welcome my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas! What's up, jerks? That's right, give it to me, San Francisco! How we doing? Fuck! Yes. Jason, I told uh, this crowd before we started the show, this is These been... motherfuckers right here? Yes. These San Francisco motherfuckers got lucky with this movie. This is a movie that people have talked about for a long time yeah, here be, on this podcast. I'll be honest with you. I had an experience watching this movie, which was, it was so interesting and is such a part of this show, which was... The high, low reaction. High, the highest of highs. Yes. Oh my God, this is a blast. How have we never done this before? Holy shit, this is incredible. And then the lowest of lows. If at 13 years in, we still have gold like this, we're going to be doing this shit forever. That this, that this exists and we haven't done it means there's still work to do. This is what and that I'm excited about. Me to the bone. We need it. We need to do it. I mean, look, you know, this is why we do this show to unearth relics like Samurai Cop. And there's a person <laughs> who loves cop movies, who loves soft kisses, and loves a good wig. Please welcome to the stage my other co host, June Diane Lavio.
Welcome, June. How are you, Paul? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I actually, I just want to get one thought out there real quick. Is after I saw this, I turned to Paul and I said, I don't think I like kissing. <laughs> like, I don't think I like it. I don't like it as an idea. Like, why do we have to kiss? Here's the thing. Kissing is gross. Kissing, watching kissing like this it was me gross. It sick. That being said, that being said, I would take every single soft, gentle, tongue-filled kiss Ew. in this movie than all of the sex scenes combined in the Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> movies that we did last week. This I movie was better sexually than all three Fifty Shades of Grey movies combined full stop. Here's the thing about the kissing before we move away from it. No, I only want to talk about the I kissing. I only want to talk about the kissing. I think it was shock. I think what I was so confused by was to see so many naked bodies or near naked bodies only kissing. Well, that well, I'm was so sorry. like June. I hate to say, I hate to come down so hard on you, but yeah, there was careful. also soft caresses. Well, that is there was what I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about the hand on leg, and I've never felt more uncomfortable in my I life so than when upset. his little finger went into her <laughs> thong underwear. I was like, what is happening here? I don't like him forming a hook. <coughs> None of it. No one <laughs> takes of off their underwear, but yet they seem no, to they be do. fucking so hard. There's, there's, there, we see Bush in this movie. We what? do, Paul. Oh, yes. We do. She's the only one, but she unrobes and like i feel like most people most people are in bed in black right. underwear black underwear or white underwear and i was watching it and thinking to myself it's so sexual but so chaste because well, the, there's not the even thing. tongue kissing yeah. well right? that's it's the like, thing there's, there's there is tongue, tongue kissing there's little some, there is oh there's there's, a, tongue there's tongue. extreme close up of tongue, tongue action in particular like the movie i think wants the tongue penetration to be the penetration yeah and that's where it is and i was like this is the, like this is a time when like the eroticism of the wait it was did you say 91 91 the 80s the late 80s i guess the early 90s is Tongue kissing and gentle, soft, gentle caresses Ew. to soft. This is where I soft, learned it gentle all. Music. This is where where you hear like kind of like this like saxophone kind of playing. Now I'll say oh. this: as somebody who I'm a hairy man, I have hair on my body. I was uncomfortable by that one man's weird hair on his body, where it was just it seemed like he had a landing strip of hair down like the calf of his leg. I was like, you know what? Do this man's. At that point, you, you got to have hair all around or you got to shave it. Like, I feel well, like that's as a Jessica choice. Sinclair always says, I want all the hair or none of the hair. Yes. You know, it's got to be one or the other. We got to put that self- out as a T-shirt. <laughs> if it's not already, that's a T-shirt. I do think, though, what I liked about this movie was... Everything? Yes. And maybe I'm wrong about this, but I'm going to go out and boldly say it didn't feel exploitative because it felt like everyone was kind of like... I know what I'm in for, and I'm doing it. Like, the, se- the sex scenes are long. They were so long. I mean, when the first one that we see when he's fucking the helicopter pilot. <laughs> Holy shit. We Paul, know. don't you mean girl cop? Lady Sorry. cop. Sorry. I, I kept writing lady cop. When he's fucking the lady cop, we know that they're both wearing underwear. We see it. There's no movement to take off underwear. And then I feel like I was watching like a mime version of sex. It was like... <laughs> there was also... Yes. But there was like, also yeah. like... It was she like gets I, on top of him and they both stop moving. It's like... Like, I was like, oh, are they not allowed to now engage in motion? Or does that I don't somehow know. make it... Uh, like uh, an X rating or something because God forbid like if someone gets up on top of me that's when movement is happening well, well I believe yeah that she was that he wasn't there oh wait what well that's wonderful news actually yeah oh oh you mean because it was the camera the yes you just, I'm sorry, yes I because I really thought to myself that one actress who was in the black bikini who I guess becomes his love interest the even restaurant though I owner thought, yes the restaurant owner of Blue Lagoon even though I thought. He was in some sort of a casual relationship with the lady cop. But that woman 
inexplicably has a black bathing suit with her on her way to church, but that she, he has put that over there for he now. He picked her up from church, brought over her there. to his home let's midday. Not, hold on, let's just for say, a dinner he's cooked in the in, afternoon that includes, I believe, a chicken and some sort of casserole Hot. in a Pyrex. I, I'm gonna say this: you say pick, this guy has made a casserole. You're you're saying picked up. I say kidnapped. Um, oh, yeah. She I will, has been abducted. I wrote as well. This woman has been abducted. But I also understand that Sunday is often people's laundry day, and she probably was wearing a bathing suit underneath because so she'd my, run out of underwear. My, I was wondering, does he have a, a bikini at the house? Photo. It's like, oh, you can throw this on if you want, well, because it, we're going to go in both the ocean and a pool. <laughs> Here at my house, I am a San Diego cop on loan. <laughs> To the okay. Los Angeles Police I, Department listen. because I am a quote unquote samurai. <laughs> okay, there's so much, you guys. I really like. I wish we had an agenda or something because there's so much. I wish to we get had into six hours. I, Thank God we do. I took I, honestly, the most. I took the most notes on this movie. I really I was know, like, I, I have keep so on much going. To say. I wrote so many just lines of dialogue out wholesale. <laughs> I also at the I watched it today in the hotel and the way and I set up I, I plugged in June, you gave me an Apple TV when I got COVID in Houston. Thank you very much. Give it up for June. I brought I brought my Apple TV with me. I hooked it I up. I technically to the, bought it. June brought it. No, June. It was I June. bought it, June she brought did it. it. All. Paul, I got it all at oh, Target. What oh, are you right. talking about? Oh, you're right. I was with the kids. Yeah. I said, uh, June got it for me. Paul pissed on it. I hooked it up. I, play, I started playing the movie. For some reason, the movie would only play at 100% volume on the TV. I watched this entire movie in a hotel at 100% volume, which when you know the movie is a, completely ADR'd, and B, full of gunplay. I was like, what must the people in the other rooms think is going on? And then every once in a while, me stoned, barking out, (laughs) just laughing so hard while this movie is screaming at me. (laughs) Okay. Wait, just to go back to, that's hilarious, Jason. 100%. 100%. That is so funny. Couldn't turn it down. That is so funny. At the end, I realized I could put my AirPods on and send it directly to my AirPods. And I did that for the last six minutes. <laughs> well, that's a pretty loud scene. That's a pretty loud... Uh... So, okay. <laughs> to go back to the black bathing suit, the black bikini for a second. So... There was a point I was really, and I also thought, what church is she going to in Beverly Hills? The Episcopalian, the yeah, the Episcopalian Church well, in Beverly Hills. Because it's also the way she was dressed. Not to shame a woman ever, but I was like, that's an interesting church outfit. It's just interesting. It's of note. But I was like, maybe she goes to one of the Kardashian churches. You know, they go to a specific <laughs> church in Beverly Hills, Calabasas, and. When she put that black bathing suit on, I was like, oh, maybe those are his bottoms. Like, maybe there's a world in which he's putting on those bottoms and for some, and he's purchasing like tops. Wait. But he's wearing women's bottoms. He's wearing the bikini bottoms as underwear? I don't know. He is definitely wearing banana hammock. He's wearing like a Speedo. He's in the banana hammock style underwear. We've seen it a couple times. It, it opens up in that black. Like I, I, I was this guy, Joe Samurai. Right, but what I'm saying is their bottoms were way too similar for my comfort level. I got what you're saying. By the way, I would. I want to say that I wish women would bring back that style of bikini. Yeah. Oh, okay, Paul. I'm listening. Yeah. Any other? Any other like requests? A super high cut? Any other requests? I'm listening. For, I guess. Any other requests for women, <laughs> Paul? Yes. What else that... do you want from us? Let so them let the... them own restaurants. Let them fly <laughs> helicopters. Let them do the things that women can do. When the lady cop turned to the weird, like older cop and was like, "Well, we don't have to be anywhere. You want to fuck?" I was I like, was "Stunned." I was like, to "What? Core. On what planet has this movie existed? And why is it playing so loud?" <laughs> but also, that comes on the heels because I think at a certain point you're like. At least I feel like 
oh, they have a thing, Lady Cop and Samurai Cop. I like this. And then the next scene after their sex scene, Samurai Cop's like, yeah, so is fucking this other woman. And she's like, hey. And he's like, don't worry, babe. You're still good. Oh, and she's yeah. like, all right. And he, then he oh, proceeds to hit on every woman. He grabs he a woman by the hair. And is absolute garbage at it. I think the movie thinks he's got some sort of riz. That's right. He but is. he does not. And I love, my favorite scene is when he's flirting with the doctor who immediately is like, yeah, you want to take me out? Yeah, you want to fuck me? And then she grabs his dick and is like, nah, too small. <laughs> what, are you circumcised? Did they chop off too much? I was like, gulp, what? <laughs> that what? scene, I have, I have not stopped thinking about. If I assume... I, I, I assume he has every other scene after that. He has no dick as far as I'm concerned. Well, let, let's take a look at that scene just so we can refresh our memory. Yeah. Scene three. What's going on, Steve? Not much, sir. There's a nurse this guy is giving everything bad. to the movie. Can we pause for one second and just give an applause break for this cop? He, he's doing next level stuff. In one scene, he's like this. He leans on nothing. <laughs> he, by I the way, like, whoa! This is supposed to be a hospital. It looks like an actor's waiting room. I've never seen a hospital where they line up twelve chairs down the hallway for you thing to about wait. This hospital, though, is that the patient they're protecting has had like serious, serious um, burns, burns, surgery <laughs> burns. And is in, like, an intensive ICU-level wound care situation. But right next to him is a dentist's office. But oh, and not here's the like... thing. When they, and when they exit the hospital that they're in, it's very clearly an apartment building. <laughs> this it's not nothing, a hospital at all. This, every location is five locations. I will also point out that before they go in to see the burn victim who's next to the dentist's office, right in front of the waiting area is a cigarette machine. Oh, yeah. I don't think yeah, right that they here. would have right a, yeah, a burn yeah. victim next to, like, they would keep them on, in a different area. And I will say this, when we watch this scene, and if you won't be able to see it if you're just listening, just know that in the burn victim's room, they have a nice, like, one of his shirt hung up on the wall as if, like, this man was on fire. <laughs> Clearly that shirt burnt, but they're like, well, we got to save his shirt. And so his shirt is hung up on the wall which is great. Here you go. Take a look at what happens with the nurse. Oh, sorry, the doctor and uh, our samurai cop. Hello. Hi. How is he? Do you think he'd be able to answer a few questions? No way. His lips are burned. So what? He'll never be able to talk again? Oh, he'll talk again, but you just have to give him a couple of weeks. Do you like what you see? I love what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? Yes. Yes, I would. Would you like to go out with me? Uh, yes, I would. Can you pause you like for to- one second? I'm so sorry. The partner's reactions going forward, everybody, everybody who, sh- this movie is shot all in singles, and everybody, you can clear, they're just running through like facial expressions, like do this, do that. Everything from now on is incredible. Go ahead. It, it is truly, like, I respect it, and I'm uncomfortable by it. And I don't know why, why I've brought this comparison, but I will say, like, what Michael Winslow does with sound in the Police Academy movies, he is doing purely with faces. And that's probably the best way I can it's describe it. It's very Commedia it. dell'arte. Here we go. Fuck me? Bingo. Well, then let's see what you've got. Doesn't interest me. Nothing there. Nothing there? (laughs) Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? (laughs) That's a take two camera! Yeah, I have. Why? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. No, he, uh, he was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes, too. That's why they buy insurance. Hey, don't worry. I got enough. It's big. I want bigger. Hey, I have... 
Incredible. Incredible I, stuff. I will say this. You all read it like she was taking him down a peg. I read it like this is a woman who likes to fuck guys with big dicks and he's not packing enough for her. I yes. feel like, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah sure. right. So she was into it until she felt his dick, which we have no coverage of. We, and he has Everything the reaction Everything happens too. below. They're, they frame yeah. out when the, there's so much stuff that they just frame like out just, just to the waist. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, stuff's going on under there. Like when the guy comes on and, and to this partner, they're going to cut his dick off. They're like, all right. And the guy reaches below frame with his knife and is like, you better tell us what we want to know. We're going to cut this off. And it's like, just below frame. (laughs) But also when they do cut wide, he's wearing underwear, black (laughs) underwear. And he get, and we start that scene with him getting out of the shower with a towel around his waist. So they make, (laughs) I just like the idea of someone. You put your underwear on first and then you dry off. (laughs) Yes. And then you put a towel on. Just in case case someone's trying to (laughs) cut your your dick off. Um, Here's the thing about yeah. this woman. I I had a different reading of it. I think she w- intended to humiliate him. I don't think there was any size that she was going to be comfortable with. And I love her. And I don't I feel I, like I feel like it really frames Joe Samurai in a very different way in all the subsequent scene. sexual Absolutely. interactions. It is a really surprising scene. and For again, your like third scene of the movie to, to basically emasculate your lead character. <laughs> Who and, you've said oh, already with the helicopter cop yeah. is like getting women. Like he's like a, meant to be like a... That's supposed to be his thing. But yes, not, he's supposed to be a playboy. She's the only one not interested and I want to know why. When I watched this movie, all I kept on thinking was he envisions himself as Sylvester Stallone, but like his life is actually this. He's like, I'm pretty cool. Like Sylvester. Like, he carries himself I think without he the thinks he's Steven Seagal. Oh. That's where I feel like, and June, this is where I'd love your opinion because I wrote here very early we may need to start with wig talk. Because. Yeah. I, I don't know what's up in this movie, but this hair is this hair some okay. real nonsense. I know, and I'm so I'm so worried about time. I feel okay. So I think he has the hair of every Charlie's Angel over the course of the movie. It's I mean, so crazy. Okay, Th- these are this so is the good. opening Thank shot. You. The I baseball this- hat and the ponytail are exceptionally bizarre. <laughs> I mean, that's wild. This is the sexual lead of the movie. And what's makes, what makes it even weirder is he does have that hair for some of it. Like, well, he has a no. real hair. He has hair. He doesn't have that hair. Right, not that hair. This is so much hair. And, you know, I have found it, honestly, no, first of all, I want to say, I'm going to say something, but I want to preface it by saying no disrespect to the wonderful hair artists and wig artists who work in our industry. And they are, what's a beautiful, beautiful craft. But <laughs> I can only imagine that the person who was responsible for doing this wig had never worked with a wig Well, before. can I tell you what happened, June? I, I, I know this to be true. What happened was this actor thought the movie had wrapped and, and he cut his hair. And shaved his hair, yeah. And then they called him in eight months later. For reshoots. And they, they're not even reshoots. We have shoots. to finish the movie. <laughs> Just shoots. 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 We've got shoots. And the director flipped out. He's like, you cut your hair. He goes, yeah, well, the movie's over. He's like, no, it's not. How much, and how much was left? Because he's wearing that wig for, I'm going to say, 85% of yeah, the movie. Like over 60%. And so the director grabbed him by the hand, put him in a car, stopped at the first wig shop, grabbed the first wig that they saw off a mannequin, and said, that's your hair now. And that was it. You can't tell that. You absolutely can. It's terrible. I mean, there's a fight scene Scene six here, where his wig comes off and on. Yeah. Yeah, No way. So that's real hair. Yeah. 
I mean, not the, that. That's real that's hair. That's real, real. Incredible stuff. This guy sells the whole movie. Yeah. This guy makes the whole movie work. He's got the hair legs. Real. So much just posturing. I love this. I loved it. I love the movie. Ooh. Full stop. Oh, nope. Oh. Also, yeah. all, can we pause for one second? Wig, wig, also, wig, wig. Where wig. did all the green go? They used that, to be in a lush green environment, and now they are in some sort of desert scape? Every scene is... Con- the, the scene is... It's inception. Every, the world is changing around them every at every sh- moment. And they match those shots with music changes. It's so abrupt. It's like, different cut, different song. We're, okay, I, sorry. Go ahead. Oh. Wig. There it was. All right, wig, and now... Wig. Wig. Wig on. Real hair. Wig. Green. Green. Lush green. What? This is, that is a, a whole wig? other place. This is where railroad tracks are? Well, I mean, this, is, this movie... They open this movie by showing you this <laughs> villain... As like, the, this is the big bad. And he has a house that overlooks a public basketball court. Like a- Everybody's house, every crime lord's house is more depressing than the next. Well, that's the None of them are successful. Thing. They the are- cop, the, the cop paid with tax dollars has the nicest home in this movie. How does Joe Samurai have that house? Yes, the beach house. How the does Joe Samurai house. have the beach house? Well, he says Paul. he owns it. How does it. he have it? He Paul. owns it from month to month. Well, that's fine if he rents it, but even still. But it seemed like he was only there for a day. It, and I will say this. And is that in San Diego? Is he commuting? Well, I am. Maybe he took her all the way back to San Diego. It's easier to abduct from people. From church? <laughs> Beverly Hills to San Diego is a quicker trip than Beverly Hills to downtown. It's true. <laughs> you got to look it up. The, I will say that the other cop, whose wife is brutally killed in the front of The captain or whatever he is? No, or, no, 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 he's not the captain. Not he's the like, captain. He's just he's another like, yeah. street They cop. come into yeah. his house and he's lifting like five-pound weights. He's lifting five-pound weights while his wife is not watching TV in a recliner, not watching him. But Also with her top completely open. Yeah, well, no, that, they, 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 they rip it open. I oh, think. they do? They yeah. go full okay. droogs on her. Okay. But really that think. house, if you look at all, at anything in that house, it's all karate magazines, framed karate magazines, and a giant karate trophy in the living room. And this character doesn't do karate. <laughs> this character doesn't, that is not part of his story. But everything Like, you're waiting for him to, like, well, you'll do karate, of course. I genuinely felt so bad for this guy. Because when they cut his wife's throat... Okay, so the bad guy is... Is his name Robert Zadar? Yes. Is that his name? Yes. Zadar? I know his last name is Zadar. Robert Zadar, Robert who is Zadar. from Tango and Cash. Yes. We, I was like, we, I know we've seen him before. He is the bad guy enforcer who's yes. the, the other samurai. Of course, this movie has two samurai in it, and it is Robert Zadar and this fucking guy. <laughs> um, when Robert Zadar, he's got a katana to the wife's throat, and he just slowly drags it. It's just like, do 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 It's so the way, crazy. The way that they chop off people's heads in this movie, it's like slicing deli meat. It's even when they cut off that burn victim's head, it's like, and I'm and, going well, this to is the, why would you t- this why is would the you weirdest cut, thing, no. Why would but, you cut his head off in the hospital? Easier. I don't know. It, here's the weird thing, and maybe you notice this at 100% volume, Jason, but all of the deaths are so silent. Silent. Even the wife, like the cop's wife, when she's getting her, her throat slit, she s- doesn't cry out. No. She doesn't fight. She's not going to give them the satisfaction of that. There's so much <laughs> soft violence. And, and soft so, kisses. And, and soft, gentle kisses. But there is so many loud footsteps. <laughs> They're putting at 100% volume, do yourself a favor. There is clop, like every clop, time clop, there's clop, like, clop, in, clop. Yes, in the hospital, it's like. Well, damn it, we're going to kill you what? now. You know, the. I was like, what the fuck is 
this By the way, I think this was a problem with the hotel TV. I feel like you're blaming it on Apple TV that I gave you, and I don't think it has anything to do with Apple TV. No, the Apple TV is flawless. I think the Foley work on this movie is absolutely bananas. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. A lot of the actors wouldn't come back to do their ADR lines, so the director just decided to disguise his voice and tone it up and tone it down. When the New York guy, when the gang of New York toughs arrive... They all speak like this. Are you great? They speak like <laughs> when robot. Pee-wee, when Pee Wee Herman has a cameo in his Beijing, Mr. Herman, Mr. <laughs> like they're all doing that voice. I do want to talk about San Diego for a second, and, mm. and the fact that he, this cop is from San Diego and is a samurai expert and an expert at trained in Japan. Trained in Japan, just living and working in San speaks Diego. Japanese, speaks they Japanese. Speaks but, Japanese, but but is confused on how to say Fujiyama. <laughs> hey, you Mr. F- I guess Fuji, Fuji. Uh. It was just such an interesting choice because I'm like, I've never known any experts to come from San Diego. Like, it doesn't seem, and I don't mean to be rude, I just don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, know wait, that. Wait, wait, June, you and I remember we met that FBI agent is a federal uh, booty inspector in San Diego. He had that shirt on. Uh, and they just make such a big deal out of it. And yet, it was so hard because I'm like, oh, I absolutely believe this guy is from San Diego. Yeah. Like, that's but then, percent but right. By default, then, he cannot be good at his job. <laughs> There's no way he's an... Ec- he's like... He is... If he is as good as he is, what's he doing in San Diego? Why would he ever land there? Well, he's like uh, he, he's he, he just busted the yakuza in in San Diego. He's he's on it. He knows everything that's up. By the way, this yakuza is the dumbest organization of all time because the yakuza <laughs> they're doing a drug deal. Well, this is just the katana gang. Oh, sorry, the katana gang. What's katana short for? Japanese, Japanese. sword. It's not though. <laughs> Nahito is Japanese sword. Anyway, um, I looked it up. The, uh, when they're doing this drug deal, well, this is the first scene that oh. we kind of see. There's a guy in a van. He may have the money or the drugs. I'm not quite sure. They're meeting up with two other guys who are getting on a rental boat, not a regular boat. And it looks like they just went like a block away from the marina. A water by, block. A, a water, water block, block by boat. <laughs> To an area where they are so much more conspicuous because they're the only people, like, they are. And terrib- especially to the helicopter. The yes. helicopter should be able to see everything that's going on. And she's like, we lost them. And they're like, we lost them too. And when you look at the morons who are perpetrating the drug deal in broad daylight, you're like, this is insane. What then happens is a montage, a chase montage. The whole, this whole montage of the drug deal and then the chase incorporates every mode of transportation that <laughs> exists currently in the world. It felt it's to me. Vans, cars, choppers, boats, everything, and none of it makes sense. It felt to me like an old, like, game that you would play in an arcade where it's like, cause it's like, here's a guy, oh, he's hanging out of the van. Bang, bang. Whoosh, bang, bang. Whoosh, like, it just, what was every- amazing is because the movie is 80 yard, um, they they do a thing where they use lines over and over again. So in the yes. this section, shoot, shoot him, is one of them. Joe Samurai says it that phrase, shoot, shoot him, over and over. They just put they just plop it in over it, and then you got him. Yeah, I got him. They use that multiple times. It's just cutting and pasting ADR lines just over shit. Did you think? Did you all think that the first time the lady cop in the helicopter and Joe Samurai met was in that scene? Because it seemed like they were meeting for the first time and exchanging some very, like, sexually charged... Keep it like, up and ready. Keep it up, You keep, keep it, warm, it warm. I'll you know, keep it warm stuff. and ready. All the stuff, that stuff is happening in that scene, but she's in a helicopter. Yeah. They're at the and end of the scene... At the end of the scene, he is outside of the car now. He's not on the radio. He's outside of the car. Him and his partner, they've done the chase. They've shot the guys. They've done all this stuff. And then he has a conversation with the woman in the helicopter. He has no method of communication. He's not doing this. There's no walkie-talkie. There's no He's just saying things out loud. He's talking to her. And she is responding. In kind. I What? (laughs) I felt for her in that helicopter because 
clearly they didn't afford uh, a helicopter could fly. They had to shoot different scenes. I think a lot of those scenes were shot with that helicopter either just on, on the, the ground. ground and just tight on the window. And it could what was get- so smart, too, is the very first scene. She's like, I'm just landing. So all they did, all they had to shoot in the helicopter was this. <laughs> because she was, and then like, oh, don't land. Take off again. And she's like, okay. And, and then, then what world in the middle of a, a bus would you be like, well, I'm landing? I thought that was the whole thing. They're going on a bus. But anyway, they're in that helicopter. And what I recognized and what I see in this movie the entire time is very hot locations. So she's in this, uh, she's in this helicopter. Doors are closed. And everybody's sweating right under the eyes, yeah. right on the nose. It's like, I'm, I'm like, guys, get a tissue. Everybody get, just needs to. Pat everyone to, down. Everyone yeah. needs to be patted this movie down. is full of sweaty, sweaty people. In a way that I was like, yeah, it looks hot. I mean, they ran over. The good guys ran over someone. Okay, and they didn't that, even attempt to how, swerve. Listen, there, there was... <laughs> At the very end, <laughs> Joe Samurai's partner says to him, before he almost kills this guy with a sword, he says, you're a cop. Yeah. And I was screaming that the whole time. Oh, yeah. Like, the casual disregard for human life is shocking. Wild. When they, they, in the section where he's like, shoot him, shoot him. You got him. Like, it's a video game. And then the bad guys throw the guy out the back of the van. This is what we're talking about. The guy gets in the street, and they don't swerve to avoid him. They run, right run over. him over completely. Gung, gung, gung. Yeah. No, they kill And then they him. cut back to him like, oh. Yeah. Because this movie is also A-team rules. Everybody's like shot, but okay. Well, nobody seems to really die. I don't know. I don't know. I thought a lot of people died. I, mean, I actually at a certain point was trying to ca- calculate the loss of human life. Yeah. <laughs> Too many. I mean, a man's so head many. was cut off and I just was dying to see it on a piano. Oh. Um, yeah, we never, I, I, I was going to say that. that we never saw that. I feel like this movie is made by and aimed at amateur stuntmen. I feel like that's what the movie seems to be a series of amateur stuntmen performances. I mean, I said amateur. amateur. Okay. This seems like a YouTube backyard wrestling style. It's got a lot of WWE big wrestling energy. There is a moment when that guy is on fire, and I was like, whoa, they got a fire effect in this movie. And. There, like, and and you could tell that the guy was like, "Oh, is the scene over?" He like, he's like, "Ah, ah, ah!" He looks up, <laughs> totally fine, and they cover everything but his head. They when they go to put him out, it's like we'll put out his body, not his flaming head. They're terrible cops. <laughs> <laughs> The best cop in the movie is the captain, is the guy who's just, every time they cut to this guy and he's chewing someone out, I was like, give me this all day, every day. The guy who... He shot all of his, because he's really only in one, he's in one location, there's one angle on him, and he's standing at the desk or sitting at the desk screaming, you know, and that's it. And I was like, oh, wow, he might have shot out all of his scenes in one day. hope for him i hope so because he was electric to watch he really was and i, I hope, mean i hope really he was. wasn't inconvenienced by a nasty film schedule i mean what <laughs> he did is the single best piece of acting i've ever seen where he goes he's like get the fuck out of here and then he holds his finger and you're like oh any minute they're gonna cut away from the scene beat 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 he's holding Beat. It's like, well, I guess they're not. And then he realizes, I guess they're not going to call cut. And he goes back in his chair, sits there, and he starts laughing to himself like, <laughs> crazy son of a bitch. It's like the captain, behind the captain on his left-hand side is a pencil sharpener that lived in my house for oh, my entire life. It was life. so evocative to me. I was like, whoa, I'm having a yes. Bruce Madeline scenario where I was like, I am having a I, sense memory about me that too, pencil Jason. sharpener. Me too. It, it was so evocative. The other prop that we're going to need to talk about is the lion in the office. Oh. I, <laughs> the I really, yes. I almost texted you, Paul, 
to say, can the lion head be the screensaver for the oh, show? Oh, that would have been great. Because the lion head, I wrote about it. I wrote, listen, this is a real note I wrote in my notes. If you are in the room next to me, I apologize for the fact that my TV is stuck so loud and also that I am laughing hysterically. And that, I wrote that at the moment where the lion head was established because this blew my entire mind. The lion head is framed so much in the shot that I was waiting for it to go, well, I would, I would, yeah, I would go out on a date with him if I were you. I would say the lion gives the most human performance in the movie. Look at those eyes. The lion. Those the lion, soulful eyes. The lion is so compelling oh, to watch. I was a thousand percent more interested in the lion, yes. more attracted to the lion. I wanted lion to know why. Than Joe Samurai. I wanted to know why the lion, where did the so lion come questions. from. But wanted, this yes. director constantly does this. Like He is incapable of framing a shot where the actor is the center of it. Even that woman who checks out his dick, the, the doctor, she is framed by a dentist office sign. Like, you, you can't take your eyes off the dentist. Like you, you are, see, like, here's what he does so well. And I really <laughs> want to shine a light on this director for a uh, second. I know we're all having our laughs and we're all having a good a time. Little, a little career spotlight. I do think that there are, there are moments in this film where, you know, like that woman outside the dentist office, that doctor, and what happened between the two of them, it forced me to ask so many questions of her, of myself. Of, and this same thing happened to me with this lion where I was like, I think I understand her dad committed suicide. Yeah. Oh, so Got beautifully handled, by the way. Oh, so that beautifully handled. Alfonso? <laughs> okay. We, the actor? Again, can, do we have it? Alfonso. Do we have Alfonso? Yes. Okay. As long Alfonso. as I know we have it, June, please continue. Okay. No, but I'm just saying there were choices made in this film. Well, here's the thing that you might think. Like, Oh, they improvised a lot. The main actor of the film, Joe Samurai, said they were forbidden to yeah, change this is word any perfect. Thank word God. Thank perfect. God. Right. And I love that about this movie because I it is too. a complicated. It's a complicated relationship. <laughs> I mean, yes, and why this lion is here. And at points, I thought, is this lion her father? Oh yeah. Was Are this we... why? Why is this lion in the office? Of the restaurant? An arguably What's the, a what seafood is the, restaurant. It feels to me like the kind of thing that I, I did feel like, and this occurred to me in the scene with the drug deal where there's the suitcases full of drugs or money. It felt to me like everything in the movie, the set decoration was all, they like emptied out a, like a Salvation Army. Everything, they took everything and were like, whatever's in here, it's in the movie. Okay, because here's my question about this lion is... I don't think that this is a piece that was meant to be mounted on a wall. Where do you think it should be? It, you think it's, it's a mask? I don't know. That's definitely Here's what supposed I'll say. to be mounted. Here's I what I'll say. Know, and one of it's... our fans will be able to. Will someone recreate and send us this lion's head? I we'll feel travel like this from is some sort of city. arts and crafts type of it's thing. Just not, it's not like a replica of some sort of big game that you'd hunt and put on a wall. But that's, like what, it's, but that's, what, it's, that's what it's aping. It's like, aping it a though? trophy. Like a lion's head on the wall. Like I shot this on safari, but instead it's yarn. I, I, knitted, this, <laughs> I knitted this on safari. <laughs> I knitted it by watching the animal planet. Um, just forces me to ask so many questions. The, the, they I will redecorate say, after her father's well, the death. lion is the most interesting actor in the movie. <laughs> I will say this. While you were questioning the lion, I was questioning that he walked out of her office, which seemingly was on the second floor, and into a dance club? Yes. Where they were maybe having dance lot. I mean, he all of a sudden encounters men who I think are about to audition for Chippendales yeah. and I'm like what is this seafood restaurant Again, that looks like every cut it seems to be a different location like, again, that, this office doesn't look like it's the office of the seafood restaurant. Nope. The dance, the discotheque that they walk, that he walks into afterwards. Also, he gets all the way to the guys where they put a gun against his head before he seems to notice that they're even there. He's a yeah. terrible cop. 
He's bad yes. at his job. He's garbage as a flirt. This guy's a real pile of I, uh, I dog genuinely, shit. I genuinely wonder what he thinks his job is. Like, what he thinks that he's supposed to be doing. Well, also, I'd like to know everyone. what he thinks sex and flirting is. Yes. Because this movie has a number of things and says a number of things, one of which is this idea about keeping it warm. Like, it comes I, up I never want to hear numerous that again. times. He says, I may I stop by later, again. so... Keep it warm. He does one of his... Keep it warm. What do you At mean? At which point, I will uh, be like, somebody arrest <laughs> this man. <laughs> We all know that old adage that women's vaginas are bread boxes and guys' dicks are loaves of bread. Right. Keep, it, keep it warm. Well, that's the thing is, like, if you're not prepared, like, their vagina can get so cold. Keep it. Keep your Make, legs hey, together. I might come by later, so keep it warm. warm yeah, I don't want to have one of those cold uh, vaginas. Uh, you know, from a cold L.A. night. I love that this movie had a gang who brunches. And when we see that gang at brunch. Love it. Which is one scene which is shot in at least seven different locations. One of them being the director's office on the last day of shooting the movie. Is that right? Yes. Wow. So we watch, let's just watch for a second just to see, that's scene four, the restaurant scene. See how many locations you can pick out and also pay attention to the sweat. Innocent until he's proven guilty. You have nothing on me. Oh, I got a lot of shit on you. <laughs> I'll sue you and the department for this insult to my client. I'll file the case first thing in the morning. What room is he in? You still have three or four hours before the uh, courthouse closes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm telling these son of a bitches that we respect the Japanese of this Can country. Can we pause for one second? Just keep in mind... He's in a room with molding around the, the doors. Like, every single is a different location completely. If it's as if this one private dining room is all walls. There's no way and, in and, or out. And, and various styles of walls. Who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business. Not for death merchants. Who distribute drugs? Why is to he our looking up there? In schools and on the streets. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers. Why? They're, he's that talking they to seated people. To make their precious millions that they deposit in their secret Swiss bank accounts. What's up there, counselor? Before your lawsuit even gets it's off the clean, it's cue steps, cards, right? I'll have their stinking bodies in garbage bags and ship them back to Japan for fertilizer. Got it? Got it. Got it. I mean. That monologue is incredible. It is, because I do think that that's the movie's attempt at giving us some backstory on why he does what he does, which I guess is for the children. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess, I guess. I guess this group has that, that one, one suitcase of cocaine is going out to all the kids of California. Well, that's the problem with the movie. Is like the drug dealers are like the drug industry, the illegal drug industry is not doing well. I, I'm they I'm rooting for the drug dealers to succeed <laughs> because compared to Joe Samurai, who lives in a mansion on the beach, they are living in shared hovels. Joe Samurai walks out of his living room down a couple of rocks yes. and is at the Pacific Ocean. Like the movie And has he made, has a pool. Yeah, the movie has made pool. an egregious error. If you have that location, give it to the bad guys. Yeah. That is a total bad guy no, lair. The bad guy's lair is a defender arcade machine uh. with a Poland Spring water bottle uh, like like a bubbler next to it. Like that, I got creeped out. I was like, oof. And then you have three bodyguards like in there. Like, oh God, why? Why would you even need three bodyguards? All of it was and, upsetting. And I'll talk about this. Um, they pour <laughs> hot oil on the lady cop. And oh. I kept on thinking, what is she making? French fries? Also, How come okay, there's so much on. hot oil? In hang the- on. She is at the, she's at the stove, right? She takes the thing, frying pan, off the stove, goes to the freezer. She goes to the freezer, opens it, 
bends down to do I don't know what. Pull it off. Comes back up and is back up at the thing. I I was haunted by Doing that. what? She also has a large bandage on her calf. I didn't see that. Which I was unsettled by. I didn't see that. Maybe Joe Samurai tried to put it in the wrong place. He tried, right, right here? Yeah. With his little dick? I... I really wonder. So when she went to the freezer, I was like, is she cooling off the oil? Like, did it get too hot? But that amount just of oil. Business. Just business. What was she doing with it? Lakas? I mean, how does she? <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, I had to make sense of it. Sunday is latka day. Frozen latkes. Lat- of course. It's the only thing that makes sense. She's preparing frozen latkes. By the way, can we just talk about <laughs> the timeline of that day. Our, our lady gets out of church. Let's say conservatively, she gets out of church at 10 a.m. <laughs> Holy shit. That, wow. that, should be, that should be the shirt. Lady Cop Latkes. Oh, my God. I love that. Just Whoa. her with a pan. <laughs> smiling. Um, all right, so... The timeline of Sunday. Let's say she gets out of church, conservatively 9.45, 10 a.m., early morning church. She's, she's going. She's going to church at like 7.30 mass. I'm now gonna, keep in mind, the night before was her birthday. No, no today, this is th- her it's birthday. her birthday. This is her birthday. I know Sunday. he makes her the cake, but I thought the night before. No, I thought Sunday she said, is her when birthday. When he asked her for Saturday night, didn't she say it's my birthday? She said she works Sunday is her birthday. I see. I'm so, my mistake. I'm so <laughs> sorry, San Francisco. But I was upset that he didn't say happy birthday when he first saw her. So, all right. So, she say she gets out at 10 a.m. Then they drive to his house. So, now it's about 11. They have a nice dinner <laughs> at about noon. So, about noon... Then they go to the beach, which probably is close by. So, all right, by there, they get a swim, they get in the swimsuit, they go down to the beach, they gingerly walk over rocks. Let's say it's been about an hour there. They figure, oh, we're done with the, the ocean. Let's go to the pool. They go to the pool. It's about. And they have fun in that pool. And, you know, I appreciate adults having fun in a pool setting. I liked her. I really, I thought I she love was her. the, I did I thought too. She was the she best went, actress. When she went to go dive off that board and did a funny, you know, jump in. I can't I find a thing about her anywhere. She does not exist online. She was disappeared but. after this movie. Yes. They brought back her character, but not the actress in the sequel. What do you mean? There's sequel. a sequel? There is a, um, a, 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 a GoFundMe sequel that came out in, uh, a couple years ago. Oh, a recent sequel? Yes. 2015. Wow. Samurai Cop 2. Blink, 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 What? But I think it's like Birdemic too. Like they're in on oh, the joke. They get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not that good. You're gonna get your mind blown when I tell you some other details about what's happened since the end of this movie. But she disappeared. You can't find a picture of her. This is the only credit she has on IMDb. Oh my uh, god, she was great. She's amazing. She's really good. But again, timeline. So then they come back for birthday cake. It's like three. I'm now. I'm really rushing the day. And uh, then they have sex. And and let's say that's five In the minutes. Bright, oh. bright sunlight. It's so slow. It's so slow and tender. It's lots of like delicate butterfly kisses like down her body. And I was like, always, I don't know what's up. I, I I felt like I was watching him just lying on bed sideways, kissing. The entire movie, and it was very distressing. Yeah, I felt like he also had hover hand over every woman's ass, which I appreciated <laughs> as being kind to you know his fellow performer. He doesn't, want, but it also felt like he wasn't fully comfortable to be grabbing ass. It was just yeah. like <laughs> there's just a, like the, <laughs> ja, uh, it's here. Yeah, it's here, but it's don't, it's not gonna. It's there's not gonna also die. a crazy shot. That is like they're moving and it moves. The camera goes in, like almost into her ass, right? It goes like it's it's close up, close. It's extreme close up on her ass. Then it reverses and it's on his ass <laughs> while he carries her to the bed. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And you know, the director was like, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna match cut these two asses, and it's gonna and but everybody's her, gonna cream when her ass. When her ass comes into frame, no camera should be that close. It was fine, but it was like, 
is it still coming into frame? It's still coming. It felt like I was watching a car accident. No, 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 no. It's going to come. It's coming too close. It's coming too close. Like, it, it was <laughs> like the ass filled the frame. There's a lot of shots in this movie that I was like, oh, this scene, this shot rather, worked up until this moment. Now it's either too yeah. blurry, too much. Why didn't they edit prior to this? Why are they, they're going to the, the uh, case in point when the wig comes off and then goes back on. Why include that? Why not edit just before that mistake happens? Yeah. And why not take that wig, like what I would give to have had some time with that wig. And I'm not a wig craftsperson, but like I would, I feel I could do something. I could cut into it. I could take out that wig. They needed to take out roughly 85% of the hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's too, it's too, it's too much. much. It looked like malignant. It there, looks like there's so much maybe hair. There's a, it's, a good it looks cop. like there's so much hair that it's trying to cover up a face on the back. There, maybe there's a good <laughs> cop on the back of him. He's the cop that is coming out. And that's why we don't see him at night. Before we go to the crowd to take some questions, get your questions ready. Oh my God, but I have so many other notes. I do. Looks like this is his last fuck. And they go, let him finish. He's like, nope. And then he wrestles with the sliding glass door for way too long. Why not just shoot him through the door? He's like, hey, get out of there. (laughs) Sliding glass doors, if they're not open, it's a real embarrassment. I mean, the, the movie is, I think, mocking his impotent rage. He can't, yeah. he can't even get through the door. This guy's dick yeah. doesn't work so much. Okay. We'll play this scene. I'll go out into the audience. Scene five. And you'll know what it is. Her name is Jennifer. She's is this Alfonso? Boss. Yep. The boss? You mean she owns this place? Her mother owns the place. Where's her father? Bang. <laughs> Kill. Who shot him? He. Who? Him. Who's him? Himself. Oh, he committed suicide. Yes. <laughs> Listen, when you see Jennifer alone, tell her, tell her I think she's very lovely. I'll do that. Tell her, tell they her have I'll the try same to see hair. Her too. Good. I'll help you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like cops. My cousin's a cop. Oh really? Where? In Costa Rica. Oh. Good. What's your name? Alfonso of El Federico Sebastian. This is my first name. Uh, what's your last name? Oh, uh, that's all right. We just need your first name. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye. I have a theory on this. If this your is theory a... is give this guy an Oscar, then I'm in, I'm in agreement. I didn't realize it the first time I saw it because I was enjoying it so much. This is a rip on Bronson Pinchot in Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, we need our crazy, oh, don't be ridiculous, Axmail. It's also got some real, like, who's on first elements to it, where there's a lot of confusion amongst what's being, like, what the details are. But here's the thing about this performance. It's realized. Yeah. After seeing this, I was like, June, like, take more risks. (laughs) Like, I'm going to, whenever I, I will say, whenever brave, I'm on brave. set, from now on, whenever I'm on think set, I'm going to think, what would Alfonso do with this? Truly. He banged he himself. It. He banged himself. I mean, he banged himself is the best way to talk about suicide. <laughs> it, it takes some stigma off of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Todd, um, uh, he banged himself. <laughs> is that what the Ricky Martin song is about? <laughs> All right, let's go to the crowd. Let's see what questions you have about Samurai Cop. All right, here we go. Hi, how are you? You have a notebook. Hi. All right, so what's your name and your question? Uh, Sheehan. Um, the question was, did you guys read the Wikipedia page where they were talking about uh, the fact that the actors were purposefully ruin- ruining scenes? This is what I think is revisionist history, right? Like, the actor's like, well, I made myself be a terrible actor. Because he said, 
oh, oh, I thought the dialogue was so bad, I would do a terrible line read of it. No, no, no. It's like no, Tommy no, Wiseau going, it. no. the room was a comedy. I don't believe it no. for a second. I don't think so. And, it's after and years the answer is of, no. Yeah. I didn't read the Wikipedia page. <laughs> I did. I did I read the I don't prepare. <laughs> I Unless read it. Unless it can be screamed at me from the TV, <laughs> I am not reading. Okay. Um, yes, your name, your question. Hi, my name is Erica Ishii, and I was wondering if you could speak to uh, Joe Samurai's actor's history as a Sylvester Stallone bodyguard and then a perpetrator of an art burglary? Wait, okay, what? so I was about to bring what? up the art Wait, burglary. What? We'll, I, I, will bring, I will bring up, because I have my notes about, yes, Joe Samurai served prison time for being a part of of an art robbery in Beverly Hills. After this movie? After this movie. Was it the art gallery in Beverly Hills Cop 1? <laughs> and, and, and Bronson Pinchot was there. Uh, <laughs> no, but yes, yeah, so he was a part of, and I believe, and my notes are up there, but uh, a group of stuntmen who... See? The stunt coordinator from this movie put together a group of stunt people to... Rob a painting. By and the they way, did it. fuck yeah. Home run idea. Wow, where's that movie? Wait, well, hold on. Say- I know. I actually was like, this is a great movie idea. Yeah, it really is. And they were what painting was it? Um, I have I have it up there. I'll I'll tell you more about it, but it is it is a uh, he went to jail for quite a, a long period of time. Oh my missed out on the success of this film because or the cult success of this film because he was in jail. Uh, and then got out, but many people thought he was dead um, because, because he was in jail. Because he was is so there out of- any way that our lead actress, his love interest, is in jail? No, because he's been interviewed extensively. I don't know if anyone has any information about her. Uh, please let me know. But I don't know about her. And also call the authorities. <laughs> but he. Um, he now I didn't know about the Sylvester Stallone thing. What's the Sylvester Stallone thing? So supposedly, since he was a bodyguard for Sylvester Stallone, that's how he got into acting, and then how he got a taste for the rich life and why he decided to steal the painting. Wait, okay. so he stole... Okay, wait, hold on. He stole <laughs> on. the painting to get some to money get... because he was already living this 1% lifestyle. Uh, As a bodyguard? After... Being Sly's bodyguard gave him access to that kind of life, and he then wanted more. Yes. I'm surprised he didn't steal huh. one of Sly's paintings. If you are in costume, I do come to, and we do have a samurai cop right here. Stand up, show everybody your samurai cop. Oh, Wig, wow. everything, a perfect... By the way, a great costume. Everything. Amazing. Down to, oh, and with a samurai sword or a part of it. Oh, God. All right, part Paul, of it. All right, don't away. worry about it. He doesn't have the full thing. All right, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, my name's Mike. So my question really is, knowing that you're going to tell us in a few minutes how the budget... I, 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 will, I don't know if I will have the answers for this. It's, it's $5,000. Okay. It, so that was it? $5, That's $5,000 on this movie. Did you make the best five thousand dollars ever spent? Five thousand, five thousand dollars on this movie. But that's a ninety-one, so that's like twelve thousand now. So my big question is: Did everybody on set know that they were making a turd burger, or did they think that they were making the next Lethal Weapon? You know, I think that like with all these movies, people don't set out; they don't know what's going on. I think retroactively, people say different things, but I think a lot of the times you're working on these things, you're like maybe. Oh, and I Maybe think it's it will exciting. Be I think you're a, a lot. I'm sure a lot of these people were very excited to be in a movie that was happening. Like that's, I mean, that's got to be wild and exciting news. It's finally happening. But at some point, were they like, wait a minute? <laughs> All right, hi. Your name and your question. Hi, my name is Chris. So at the scene where they were gonna cut that gentleman's business off, did anybody notice that the switchblade was a comb? <laughs> what really oh my god I believe it I love it alright I love it and that they, they just like combed his pubes well imagine how long it would take to cut off someone's dick with a comb oh yeah very painful you break okay. a lot of those teeth um, your name your question my name is Andrew um, if they had double the budget what do you think the director would change or do or what would you want them to do 
Wow, Double the budget. I mean, I think, it, and, and this so is So we're not, talking about $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> this is not, yeah, this is not a hilarious answer, but it's very clear in the movie that they were not able to record sound during the filming of the movie. Yes. Because the whole movie is ADR'd and foleyed, like, top to bottom, T to B. Well, so I think they probably maybe would have wanted sound. sound. <laughs> they would have been able... The, One of the, the, key the ability to capture sound on the day must have been something they were disappointed to not be able to do. I would say, um, buy it's more like a movie from the 30s. I would say buy more props because clearly the guns are being reused, which is why every villain can only be in frame. One at a time. But Paul, you run the risk of losing the lion's head. You run the risk of losing some iconic things if, they're, if you can have real props. I'm saying just guns. More oh. guns so you can at least have two henchmen fighting someone. It seems like every, like, I die, then you took my gun, and then you run into the next scene. Like, it was a gun baton. Like, yeah. they're passing the baton from scene to scene. June, for $10,000, what $10, would you do? $10,000. Um... Okay, with that extra five grand, I think I would, I think I would equally disperse it between all of the actresses who had to do all the slow kissing with the men in the movie, and just give them pay bumps. That just feels like the right thing to do. (laughs) All right. So you would have increased the kissing budget. I guess so. I can't believe I would have said it, but would you be charging per kiss? Oh, God. Wow. Those kisses. And you can only imagine if that's the length of kisses that were on screen, oh. how long did they shoot those kisses for? They're, and the kisses like, were slow. They were like... <laughs> were that's what it's like. Now, I know everybody in here is drenched right now because I did that. <laughs> and they're going to have to mop up the Masonic Auditorium. Because the floors in here don't have sawdust on them, even though I said, it's going to get gushy. (laughs) We said keep it warm, not keep it wet. Keep it warm. Okay. Obviously, we'll hear more about the making of this movie in just a little bit, but now it is time to hear about people who love this movie, which we do. It is now time for Second Opinions. This is a song for the lady cops. But Samurai... Listen close. You don't fuck with Robert Zadar. That's the first samurai rule that you learn. Keep a couple extra wigs in your car and wait to buy Merlin the return. And when you choose which to bed, the Hornet Cop, Porno Doc, or Big Red, you pick the one that gives that good lion head. And slip into matching swimwear. Instead of doing church on Sunday, master a blank stare. That's your foreplay. <clears throat> Bingo. I gave it five. What is your name, sir? Whoa. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> My you... name's Jed, like Jedi without the eye. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give it up for Jeb. Give it up for Jeb. Who gives it five Zadars? That Incredible was work. Get I gotta say, get I... him out of here. God. <laughs> Get him out of here. I got to say, I was bummed. I got a, they got a fuck yeah, Jason, a fuck yeah, Gina, and get a fuck yeah, Paul. Nothing for you, babe. Uh, you Nothing know. for you. Wow. <sighs> that was amazing. Right Thank you, sir. All right. So here we go. These are five-star reviews. Cold from Amazon. There are 666. 666 total reviews. Sign of the devil. And the sign of a great film. Uh, 84% are five-star. 2% are one-star. And it goes something like this. Peter O'Brien... Uh, titles his review, Keep It Warm, Captain. (laughs) Frank was the man. He had a gift. He had a vest. He had lines. He delivered. He survived. In some ways, this was a progressive movie. (laughs) A woman co-piloted a helicopter. 
A woman owned a restaurant. Some women even got a name. The fourth sex scene does end eventually. Five stars. Wait, I didn't think she was... Gosh, maybe, maybe I have to interrogate my own reading of this movie because I didn't think she was piloting that helicopter. Felt like she was a part of the co-pilot? I thought she was just saying, like, it's time to land here and we got to go there. So she's, like, conducting the helicopter. (laughs) She's, like, the boss. I think I thought she was a passenger. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Charles Kapowski uh, titles his review, 63% samurai, 48% cop. (laughs) And his review... Is I made the bold claim that I'd have to give this movie five stars if it had a ritualistic suicide in it. Here I am, five stars. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to end on this one from Kevin, written in 2017. The title is Five Stars. The review goes like this Best ramen ever. Konishiwa, this movie is cinnamon. Five stars. Um, Obviously, people love this movie. Um, I have some conflicting information that the budget was actually $7,000. But here is what I have found um, here about the the painting. Um, so the painting was... Uh, okay, hold on. Let me find it right here. Sorry, wait. Oh, there. Okay, so the lead actor was unable to get any substantial roles after Samurai Cop and withdrew from the entertainment industry for two decades. In 1992... Even that took- framing, like, I withdrew, is... <laughs> I, I think he was escorted out. Yes. So in 1992... He took part in an armed robbery, stealing a Rembrandt painting from televangelist Gene Scott's University Cathedral in Los Angeles. The painting was found in the home of Karash Jadali, a stunt coordinator who worked on the set of Samurai Cop. Uh, the Samurai Cop was arrested and sent to prison. He was largely unaware of the cult status that Samurai Cop had attained over the preceding years. Um, and so that was what happened. That was Imagine a, a, if you went to the house of the stunt coordinator from Samurai Cop. And he was like, have you seen my Rembrandt? (laughs) It's a Rembrandt. (laughs) (laughs) The the actor, the Samurai Cop actor, has been doing a lot of press. You can watch plenty of interviews with him. He did say upon walking into the director's office for the first time, he was told he was perfect and handed the full script. Despite the film being titled Samurai Cop, he had no experience with weapons, and all of his formal practice would be classified as MMA. Uh, As a result, his lack of experience uh, and Shervin's inability to direct any of the combat scenes, that meant that everyone choreographed them quickly 15 minutes before every scene was shot. That's, I will say, not surprising at all. Because many of the fight scenes are so, so, so long and nothing happens. There's just a lot of like, pushing, pushing. There's a lot of like contact, but then just movement based on the contact. Yeah, it it really is a bizarre film to also cast somebody as a samurai cop who doesn't really do any sort of uh, karate at all. Um, And then every shot in the movie was done with a single take to conserve as much film as possible. This movie was shot on film. Uh, So the bloopers, flub, lines, and mistakes are all left in the final cut. Also knowing that all of these actors got one take, I'm like, I'm even (laughs) more impressed with a lot of them. (laughs) Um, The tagline of this movie was great. You have the right to remain silent. Dead silent. I would have loved it if someone had said that. Um, the movie did come out in 91, which is the same year Terminator 2 
Uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and Home Alone came out. So there we go. That did not break the top 200. Uh, the gross is 384,000. I don't know where they got that from, but that is the gross of this movie. And it was found in a vault in China. Wow. What? Yeah, that's the thing I don't understand. With under- the COVID-19 virus? I think when they opened the vault, that's when it got out. That there are rumors that... The, the, are you saying the virus is part of the marketing campaign for this movie? I mean, that's what the happened. Plan- that's what you gotta do now to get a movie out there, you know? <laughs> Basically... This movie was found in Wuhan? <laughs> in a wet market? <laughs> um, Gregory Han- Hananaka, who is the founder of Cinema Epoch, uh, had a vault, and one of his employees was going around, and they found it. That's it. They just found it. What a find. And that was, uh, you know, so that was uh, a little while ago, I guess, when they re-released this movie on Blu-ray. So there that's... Are, there are so many montages and action sequences in this movie that use the exact same backing track as the, the soundtrack to those yeah. things. And I became truly, like obsessed with it i was like this is the best music i want maybe it's video it game so music loud, i want Jason. it was also it was it was hitting me so hard it was on your insides. out of, the, out of yeah. the speakers on the tv it was assaultive in every way <laughs> but i genuinely started to be like i think i might want to come out to this music for the rest of time to the show i want the i want the samurai cop music to play when you introduce me i love it's it so propulsive and exciting i was like i love this i mean it really this is a perfect film would you recommend it i guess is the next question I, I, you know what Yes. 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 I, 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 yes. I, I would. I said, you know, when Jason said this before, when he came out, when, when you two were talking in the introduction, like, it's so shocking that we haven't covered as journalists this movie before because it's so iconic that I, it was. Sh- it, it does make me feel like, oh wow! I guess we will be doing this forever. Yeah. I guess this is. It's like if things like this are possible, we're yeah. Fucked. Our sentence is so much longer than I thought. Ugh. We have to keep doing this. Um, it was shocking. It was shocking to know that something this good was out there that we had never I seen. Would, I enjoyed it. I would put this in the ca- in a very in rarefied category, which is I think we should do it again. I would, I feel like, I feel like we will get more out of this movie on a second watch in two years. I am. When, of course, we will all be dead. (laughs) I also recommend this movie highly. I will tell you that Samurai Cop 2, Deadly Vengeance, also titled Revenge of Samurai Cop, is a 2015 American action film directed and co-written by Gregory Hatanaka. It's a sequel to the cult film Samurai Cop. It stars, we got our two cops back. Okay, we got all the original roles back. With Bailing, Caden Cross, Tommy Wiseau, Lexi Bell, Joe Estevez, and Mindy Robinson. Uh, and it is... Uh, Wait, it, not Robert Zadar. Has Robert Zadar passed away? Uh, I'm yes, assuming. yes, he has passed away. And this takes place... Um, Basically, Joe is going to settle down in L.A. with his girlfriend when suddenly she's murdered. Then 25 years pass, and um, shit goes down. Well, here, but you said earlier that it feels like they're in on the joke by yes. this point. So that I don't necessarily want to do the sequel. I like. I agree. This feels pure in a way, but you said something earlier that I think I didn't realize upon watching. Was this not released in 91? Was this released much later in a Miami Connection style? I think it was released in 91 and then lost. Okay. And then it was refound and re-cherished. Okay. So it hasn't been like playing on basic cable for a long no. time? No. Okay, got it. No. But this sequel does look insane. Okay, so um, San Francisco, it's been fantastic being here once again. We did it! Thank you for coming. We will be back, San Francisco. Thanks for being such a great crowd. Good night. Eat shit, San Francisco! Thank you so much to the staff at the Masonic, our amazing tour manager, Beth Thomas, and our recording engineer, Michael Day. If you want the t-shirt we created for this episode, which is pretty great, it's Lady Cop Latkes. 
Keep them warm. Go to tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. My book, Joyful Recollections of Trauma, is coming out very soon. Please pre-order it now. It actually makes a giant difference. I, I, I beg of you. No, I appreciate everyone who's pre-ordered. You can go to my website if you have pre-ordered and get access to my super secret scrapbook where I am posting a bunch of extra things for the people that have come up and shown up for me. I will be reading the audiobook. The audiobook comes out on the same day with a ton of extra special features. And here's the best part. No matter where you live in the world, I am doing a worldwide signing. That's right. Go to Premier Collectibles and you can get a a relatively cheap ticket to go see uh, a live show, a Q&A, and I'll sign books virtually for only 35 bucks in the book retails for $29. So that's, you know, four dollars more i don't know here's the thing people i'm on a tour you can see me and jason doing improv in portland and seattle you can see june and joel kim booster meeting each other for the first time in la at chevalier's books you can see adam pally and i in chicago talking about my book and doing a fun show at the den on may 29th you can also see me in brooklyn and you can see me at the strand in new york city with busy phillips so much fun stuff coming up for the book tour i'd love to see you all out there i've kept the prices down as much as i can uh some are free some or not, but it's going to be fun. I will sign whatever you have. Well, primarily my book. Buy my book, and then we'll talk about what I'll sign. Anyway, uh, go to my website, paulshear.com, to find out uh, where you can sign up for these events or buy tickets for them. Whatever. You know how it works. Anyway, if you have a correction or a mission from this episode, leave me a voicemail at 619-P-A-U-L-A-S-K, or write a comment in our Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm, and then make sure you tune in next week to our Last Looks episode as we talk more about Samurai Cop, and I respond to your messages. Uh, Also, next week on Last Looks, we'll be talking to Todd Glass. He's going to chat with us a little bit about his new project. Remember, you can find us on social media everywhere at HDTGM. And if you love the show, tell your friends to listen to Word of Mouth Helps. And last but not least, I got to say thank you to all the listeners who support this show every week and our entire team to whom the show could not be done without. I'm talking about our producers, Scott Sonny, Molly Reynolds, our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineer, Casey Holford, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros. That's all I got. We'll see you next week on Last Looks. Until then, bye for now. Bye for now.